Hey everybody, just let me know if you can hear me. We're about to start in just a second here. Just uh, sending out a quick message here to people on social media and then we're going to be booting off or kicking off. So say yes, you can hear me or no, you can't hear me. Let me know. Of course, there's always a little bit of a delay there. Um, so let's have a look. I see comments coming in. All right, you guys can hear me. Awesome. Just give me about 30 seconds and we're going to go live. So if you're new here, guys, uh, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell us where you're from. And if you are not new, then just tell everyone, hey, I'm a regular. And uh, we're going to be taking off just a second. So do me a quick favor too, guys. If you're on social media, share this link with your friends and I'm about to tweet it and then we're gonna start live so this is gonna be about 15 seconds guys all right so I'm not gonna put up the countdown today we're just gonna literally just count down ourselves so let's count down we're going live in five, four, three, two, one, and boom, we are live. Welcome to Live from Lockdown, episode number 55. All right. Um, it's great to see you guys. Lots of regulars there. Um, good to see all your virtual smiling faces. Um, this has become a, you know, a, a ritual, a hangout for us for about a year now, actually just over a year. Um, so we started this thing, you know, when everything went into lockdown, it was a good way for us to kind of come together around something that unites us, which is Photoshop and photography and digital art and all the things that we love. So good to see all you regulars that have been with us the whole time. And if you're a first timer, welcome. Uh, you're in for a treat. This is a great group of people. If you see the chat there and you're live. So if you're here between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. Pacific time, you are live if you're not you're watching the replay and that's okay if you're watching the replay drop us a comment underneath if you're watching us live there's a chat there um if you haven't if you don't see the chat try logging in uh into youtube you don't have to log into youtube to watch it but if you want to comment you'll have to do that so the comment section is full of all kinds of nice people lots of regulars that are with us every week friendliest place on the web and of course our friendly cocktail waitress bruce is with us he loved it when i called him a waitress um so bruce will take your drink orders in fact he's our moderator and he takes care of any problems you guys have um any questions uh he relays the questions back to me um i read them all afterwards um but uh yeah so I'll, I'll see those so even if i don't respond to them live i will look at those comments afterwards i read them all and i do my best to stay up with the comments while we're live so any questions issues anything like that let bruce know and he'll take care of you and of course he loves to take drink and food orders um you know we'll get those right over to you as quickly as we can but the most important thing that bruce does of course is when i forget to turn the screen on he's always turn on your screen dude um, which happens quite a lot. So thank you, Bruce, for that, for keeping us um, all going. All right, guys. So are you ready for this week? What we're going to do is I decided, you know, we've done a lot of different things throughout the weeks. And I figured, you know what, let's do a light, uh, fix my photo super special this week. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking at your guys' photos and fixing them. And we're going to start with a couple of difficult images. I guess I called them impossible images. Um, let's just kind of see where we go from there. Now, I, I do know, like, um, if you're just joining us, welcome. You haven't missed anything yet. And yes, I do talk a little bit at the start. And the reason I do that is because it gives people time from the newsletter, people who get it from Facebook, from Twitter. It takes a little bit of a moment for them to get those notifications and get online. So that's why we do that, you know, minute to two minutes at the beginning which is what we've done. So, all right, guys, let's kick off and we're just gonna go straight to fix my photo this week. So let's do it. And here we are, and this is fix my photo. So 
If you want to submit your photograph to be considered, upload it to fixmyphoto.net. Today we're going to take some that have already been submitted. Usually, you know, we'll uh, take what get... Uh, <laughs> blah. Let me spit all that out again. You can submit them at any time. And if you do submit them while we're doing the live program, we'll, we'll consider them for next week. Um, possibly some might sneak in. I don't know. But uh, anyway, fixmyphoto.net. Upload the raw file if you can. Um, the unedited file is preferred because there's no point trying to fix a photo that's already fixed. And, uh, you know, and if it comes in a JPEG, I can do my best, but um, I can't do as much as I could with a raw file or even a TIFF. So um, upload those, whatever you've got, fine. And just remember, three submissions per person per week. All right. So why don't I go directly to the screen now? And we're going to do that. And uh, here we are on the screen. And I'm going to bring up Lightroom. And let's see what we've got inside of there. I'm just resizing Lightroom on my other window, so it's not going to blow out the whole screen because of the uh, size. So let's go in there. So the reason I open up in Lightroom is this is the catalog. And uh, these are the latest submissions. So what happens, guys, is when you upload it to fixmyphoto.net, let me tell you exactly what happens behind the scenes because uh, this will live update. So that means if anyone uploads something right now, it will update live. So um, the reason it does that is because I've got it connected to Dropbox. So when you upload those, they go to Dropbox. And then I have Dropbox synced on my computer and I have that set as a watch folder. And then it looks at the watch folder and it brings those in. And now if you're going to upload anything bad, don't worry. There's a time delay, so those are not going to be seen. All right, so these are the photos that you guys have submitted um, since we've been doing Fix My Photo. And you can see there's a lot of photos. How many do we have here? 500 photos have been submitted. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with this, the newest set. And, you know, we might go back and look at some other ones. And from time to time, we do that. So I'm thinking about, let's start with a couple that I said were going to be difficult. So let's start with this one here. And this one has been submitted. Oh, I forgot to tell you, when you upload your photo, put your name in the file name so we know it was you. Just like we can see here, it was Jeff McLean. Jeff McLean, are you in the house? If you are, say hello. I'm going to pop out the chat and I'm just going to put it into my window here so I can see what everybody's saying. There's our chat there. Are you in the house, Jeff? Let's see. And good to see you, Tracy, Russ. A uh, couple of uh, regulars. Same with Chris. Um, we've got Mistake here. Good to see you, Lewis. Good to see you. Um, it is a great Lightroom week. And uh, Orca Pest, of course, is another regular. Ah, Jeff McLean is in the house. All right. If I'm saying your name wrong, I apologize. I keep thinking McLean, you know, from Die Hard. Um, so that's great. So you're here. Thank you for submitting these photos. And I'm going to sit, I'm going to just take a wild stab in the dark. And I'm going to say you submitted this photo because it's crooked. No, I think you submitted this photo because the water is dirty and muddy and gross. And we're going to see if we can fix it. Uh, fixmyphoto.net. Uh, link for photo upload does not work. It should work. Um, maybe just try a different browser if it's not working for you. All right, let's kick off of this. And um, less banter, more work, right? Okay, so let's go into the develop module. First thing I want to do is I want to straighten this photo. Um, so why don't we do this? By the way, I'm in Lightroom right now. If I was working in camera raw, the settings and the tools are exactly the same. But there's one thing to bear in mind. If you want to crop a photograph or you want to straighten a photograph or you want to use super resolution, Anything that changes the size of a photograph and you're working in Camera Raw in Photoshop, what you want to do is go to Bridge, right click and choose Open in Camera Raw, and that will open Raw files, TIFFs, JPEGs, PNGs, um, and, and you can work that way, and PSDs, of course. Now, if you're working inside of Photoshop and you go as a filter, none of those tools will be available. However, if you have a raw file, you can go to Photoshop File Open, and it will open that raw file and those settings will be there. So all these settings are the same settings in Lightroom and Camera Raw. If you don't see them in Camera Raw, don't use it as a filter because when you use it as a filter, some of those tools will not show. Okay, 
just addressing now. Okay, first thing, let's straighten this. Let's jump into it. All right, angle. We're just going down. We're grabbing the crop tool under the tools. We grab the angle and I'm just going to click and drag across what I would imagine would be the horizon. And uh, looks pretty good. Click on the tool again. Shows us we've got a crop. We've got a little bit of barreling, but is that the river or is it lens distortion? Who knows? Let's go down because it's a raw file. We can go into the profile. Under profile, we can enable profile corrections. And we can see it's built in ORF. Um, so that would be, mm, help me, help me there. What type of camera is an ORF? Um, I know it's not a Canon, Nikon, or a Fuji, because it would be an RAF. It's not a Sony. Um, so I'm just waiting quickly there. An ORF would, Olympus, thank you. All right, thank you for that. Um, and if you know the type, we can put it in here. So if you don't see it in here, you can go down and, um, wow, looks like Olympus is the red-headed stepchild that is not being included in these camera profiles. Is that right? Well, that's not nice, is it? Okay, so what we can do, if you don't see your one in there, just grab a different one like just Sony or something, and you can actually just go in and then choose the other one. So because we're working on a raw file, I can see it's a what 4.5 mil. Okay, that's that's weird. Olympus, duh. <laughs> Thanks for that. See, Bruce wants to get back to me. Back at me, should I say. Okay, so we can go under there. Oh, the other thing is if you're having trouble trying to figure out what your camera is, like I just did, go under manual and just change the distortion. And you can just pull it back. That's what I wanted to get rid of. There was a little bit of barreling there that was kind of annoying me. So I just want to get rid of it. All right, let's go to the obvious problem. And the obvious problem here, of course, is that we have all this color. So I'm just going to choose, see that little white gap, by the way, if you choose constraint to image, that'll get rid of those white gaps there. Um, so let's definitely do that after we've warped it. Okay, so the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna grab the gradient tool because I don't wanna adjust just the brownish tones in the whole photo because this will get the trees. So we're gonna grab the gradient and we're gonna start here at the top of the water, drag it down. Notice it's going the wrong way, so just flip it all the way around. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and the shift key will constrain this. So we've got that. Now I'm gonna grab the pen and I'm gonna drag it down. I'm gonna grab it down right near the top and let's move that pin again. And if we need to, we can tweak this later. But what we're doing is setting the area. So now everything on this side of the photo is going to be adjusted. So you don't have to use the gradient tool as a gradient. You can use it as a selection tool to say, you know what? I just want to edit this half of the photo, not the other. Obviously, these corrections are not working. Let's double click on effect, resets everything. Beautiful. Now we can see a little bit better. I'm going to bring that down to the middle. All right, so now what we want to do is get rid of this brownish color because it's brown and muddy and yucky. So one of the things I'm going to do is take the temperature. Let's move it to a nice blue, looking nice. Let's brighten it up a little bit because the tones would be better. Not quite there yet. One of the things that people don't always think of using is saturation. Let's take the saturation down a bit. Oh, now it's starting to look a little bit more natural. In fact, let's take the exposure back. There we go. And I'm just playing around with that color. Get it there. Let's see where we were before and after. Okay, great. But losing a bit of color here. So what we do if we're losing the color is choose brush. And with the brush, we can now go in and we can manually adjust this. So I'm just going to hit the left bracket key to make this smaller. Now, there's a little problem happening here, here with the brush. Look on the brush. You can see plus. So what that means is if I paint outside, it's going to do nothing. If I paint inside, it's going to do nothing. So go down under the brush. You can change it to a race. Now, when you look on it, see how it says minus? Oh, perfect. That's what we want. We want to do minus. So we want to paint away on this particular kayak. But I don't want to get the water. I don't want to go over the edges. So we're going to make sure the auto mask is turned on. And then that'll detect the edges. And now with a very sloppy hand, I can go over there, whoa, and paint it back. Great, let's get that bit. Good, looking good. Now, if you go over 
just hold down the alt or the option key that'll go back to that little plus thing and I'm just gonna hit the bracket key a couple of times to make that smaller and you can just touch it up paint it back in if you want to get really really in there and get perfect there we go great all right so let's do the same thing for this kayak let's see I kind of like it almost white but let's see what happens if we paint it oh no that yellow is definitely gonna look better and we just paint that back and of course this is using the look at look how well that um, auto mask does it just does a great job going over a little bit at the front so I'm just gonna hit the alter the option key or just go back to a brush you can set the A and B brushes by the way guys so here's the thing if you want to sometimes work on a large soft brush we go here we get this nice large soft brush but from time to time uh, let me just put it this you can see it that center circle is where that brush is going to work hundred percent the outer circle is the fade zone so that's going to blend so that's going to be softer or larger if you hold the shift and the uh, left bracket key you can change the hardness notice there's a hard brush as I hold shift now it blends further which will create a softer edge brush so maybe I want to work for a large soft brush but from time to time I want to go in and I want to work on that nice tight clean brush so what I do is I create a second brush hit the B under the B make sure feather is low and this will enable me to get into these little tight spots like up here see there and now I can just go in there and clean that up manually let me just undo that because I went too far I can turn on auto mask for here too if I want and grab the water look at that go around the edges clean it up and then of course when I want to go back I don't have to change that brush again I can just tap on a there's my nice big soft brush every time I want to go to B there's another brush that enables you to save two different brushes because um, I've seen you know I've done it you know where you make the big soft brush and you're like oh, I gotta clean it up and then you change the brush and then you gotta go back so just um, set it up this way and then you guys are set all right so let's have a look let's uh, just click on the gradient tool we'll hide that let's look at our before image let's look at our after image and you can see it's gone from muddy mucky to beautiful crystal clear water okay guys so if you like that do me a favor hit that like button the reason I do that is not because I want to pay my mortgage with likes it's because it helps us with the algorithm and uh, and it just helps us get discovered on YouTube it's just the way it works um, why does all the clickbait stuff you know I, I get a lot of people say to me I, I'm looking oh I found your channel I'm really happy you know because I'm calm and you know and I teach real world techniques there's some people that are extra hyped up and you know and it's it's very what they call clickbait clickbait is where you hype something up and it's not really what you said it was and that always rises to the top in YouTube because of the way the algorithm works you know so that hypey kind of thing will will be seen because people will click on it so they get engagement so rather than hyping it up if you guys hit the like button it helps it get discovered anyway long story short that's why youtubers beg for likes and subscribes and if you haven't subscribed hit the subscribe button all right guys let's let's move on and um, so what do you think about that I think that is a winner and Jeff if you want this oh by the way guys if I use your photo and fix my photo and you want the final results I uh, just go to photoshopcafe.com and you'll see contact uh, click on that contact button and send me a message with your email and I'll happily email you the full resolution image um, of course you should be following along the tutorial and, and fixing it yourself but no, you know I have no problem giving that to you guys now if it's not your photo please don't ask me because I respect the privacy so when you upload the photo it's your photo I'm not gonna share it out with everybody I'll post it on Instagram maybe for a before or after but I'm not gonna give anyone else your file so don't worry I respect that um, all right so let's have a look what have we got here we've got some photos here oh we've got a fence okay and we've got another one with a fence and another one with a fence hmm my friend Tony Mule Tony thank you for always sending me impossible images now I noticed something here this one here is a Nikon file he's shooting with a Nikon are you in the house Tony if you are say hi good to see you Klaus and um, okay I'm just looking for one to do this one doesn't have much of a fence this one has more of a fence this is I definitely take offense to this sorry sorry um, 
this one I'm not going to do because it's a JPEG um, and I can see it, you know, it's just not going to give me as much resolution as working this one. This is a NAF or a Nikon file. So why don't we work on this high resolution file? Tony Mule, good to see you, man. Um, all right. So Hulk smash the like button. I like that. Um, all right. But don't break your computer. If you break a computer, send the bill to Bruce. Bruce Bruce will buy you a new computer. He's rich. All right. So <laughs> what we're going to do here is my first thought when I look at this is, an, and when did you upload? You just uploaded this, didn't you, Tony? Okay. Look at this. Okay. So, you know, just uploaded. Um, well, actually, I know it was just uploaded because when I <laughs> launched Live Room, it just showed up. All right. So my first thought here was, dude, um take a new photograph this is this is not going to be fixable come on look at this we got this fence but i like a challenge so i think we're going to give take a stab at it now a little tip and i'm sure you guys already know this if there's a fence this is good for things like zoos and stuff like that if you set your camera to a very shallow depth of field which is the high f stop you know the smaller number gives you a bigger opening i know um, so what you want to do is open that aperture up. So, you know, if it goes to a 2.8, go down to a 2.8. If it goes to a 4, go to an F4. If it goes to a 1.8, go down to a 1.8. Get the camera really, really close to that fence and then focus something far away. And a lot of the time, those fences will miraculously disappear. In a situation like this, where we have a fence here, um, let's just dive in and see what we can do. First thing I'm going to do is these trees are... Cool. I remembered the name of these, but I, I forget right now. It's a difficult name. It's probably something like oak. Um, but anyway, um, I'm going to take the highlights down just a little bit. So they'll put a little bit more kind of um, dynamic range in there. Shadows. Let's take the exposure down just a touch. And I'm also going to drop the contrast. I noticed these uh, Nikon files tend to shoot um, quite contrasty. Uh, it's in... Uh, Hey, Rayel, good to see you from Perth, Australia. And he's saying it's from Tanaja, California. Let me just move that over here. Tanaya, California. Why did I say Tanaja? Tanaya? So just in case you guys don't see that chat. All right, let's go. Let's open this in Photoshop. So I'm going to right-click, choose Edit into Photoshop. And let's have a look. Let's remove this fence. Now, it's... There, there is a thing that some YouTubers do, and you know, and I do it myself. I'm just going to let you guys into a secret. I'm going to start on this before I let you into the secret, just to get started. Um, looks like I tapped on there. Let's start with Content Aware. So I'm going to grab the lasso tool. I'm going to get rid of this. Don't need it. I'm just going to Control J so we can look at the before and after as we're working. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these big things. So when you're doing retouching, something like this can look impossible. So what you want to do is you want to start with the big stuff first, you know, like clearing a field, start with the boulders, move on to the rocks, then the pebbles, then the sand, you know, so let's just go here. So I'm going to hit right click and the, uh, shift delete or that shift backspace on Windows will bring up the fill dialog box, grab content aware, just click OK. And all right, so let's just get rid of these big ones first. And, you know, we'll come in, we'll do, we'll fix all the other little things later. You know what? I'm going to grab that there. One of the things here, let's, I probably went a little looser than I need to, but I'm just going to keep applying this. Um, I'm going to do this bottom part separately because it's a different texture. So if you get something like that with it, whoa, with a different texture, um, try to respect those textures individually. And, uh, why is, did I change that from content aware? Yes, I did. You know why I've got my touch on and my walk on. Let me turn that off because it seems to be causing me a little bit of grief today. So let me just go into here. If any of you have a walk on, if you right click it or touch on the uh, touch rings, it gives you the settings. So I'm going to choose settings. Then under the settings, let's go down to the express key preferences. My preferences should open up. So I don't know how many of you are working on here and let's make sure that we go to touch and I am going to touch off. So touch options. Uh, where is the options here? 
I believe there's just a setting. There should just be a setting that says touch on and off. Mm, tap to click. That's fine. I'll take that off. That should solve the problem right there. All right. Yep, that got it. All right, good. So my palm was hitting there for some reason. Palm rejection is not working well. If you have problems, if you walk on, by the way, guys, um, install, reinstall the drivers, which is probably what I need to do. Okay, so let's just keep going. Content aware. So anyway, fixing the big things first. These are the boulders, so to speak. And then, you know, getting rid of the rocks or the stones would be the uh, chain link fence, maybe. And then the little fine pebbles will be just, you know, getting rid of things like noise and grain. So, all right, we're getting rid of those main things. All right. So now we're going to go in and we want to start working with the fence itself. So I'm going to go to 100% view. Let me just double click. Let's get it nice and big. And then what I want to do is I just want to start working on the tree. So the tool I'm going to use now is I'm going to use the spot healing brush. Spot healing brush is a good place to start. If it doesn't work, then switch to the healing brush. Now I'm not going to be doing any repair on these. All I'm doing is I'm just going through and just doing the basic uh, corrections first. Then later on, I would go through and then I'll do, you know, fix all the little wiggly things, you know, the little bits that show up. Okay, so let's speed things up. I'm going to tap. I'm going to follow this to the end, hold down shift key and release and it'll create a line in there. And that's going to get rid of that. Let's go to the next one. We're going to continue to do this and we'll come back and we'll fix little things later. All right. So how many of you thought I was going to be able to do this? Or how many of you thought I wasn't going to be able to do this? Let me know in the chat. And how many of you have changed your mind now? You think this is going to be possible? All right. So anyway, as I was saying, so here's a little secret. When people teach Photoshop, this is why, you know, like you probably, maybe you were looking for that magic trick that, you know, one keystroke removes this fence, which, you know, there's always tutorials like that on YouTube. I, I make them too, you know, but basically what really happens when you do those is it's not real world. What instructors do, and I'm, I'm just, about to pull back the uh, the veil and show you the uh, Wizard of Oz right now. They say, hey, you know what? I want to teach this tool. So then what you do is you go search and you find the perfect photo that it works with. Sometimes you take a good photo and you make it look bad. I'm giving away all the secrets. And then you say, this is the one click magic trick that will fix your photo. So when you see those how to magically fix this in one click the secret hidden amazing tool and brush to fix any problem in Photoshop it's because essentially they found an image that it worked with what they wanted to teach in the real world where where I yeah I'm not saying I'm better because I do the same thing don't worry guys I, I've done this on YouTube as well so I'm not saying I'm better um, but in the real world, they give me photos like I worked in magazines for years and I would open my inbox and those are the photos I had to fix. Just kind of like fix my photo. So these are the photos you guys are giving me to work on. And so it's not it's a different kind of approach and it's more real world. It's like, OK, what are we going to do? How do we fix this problem? So you actually got the problem. Then you have to find the solution. The way we do a lot of tutorials is we have a solution first, then we look for a problem to fix. So I'm just saying that, you know, um, because there's not always all of that really was just to say there's not always a quick trick or a fix for everything. Now, see how some of these don't look good? It doesn't matter. I don't care at the moment. I'm going to come back and get those later. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing the pass here where I am fixing these basic things. Um, with frequency separation, where frequency separation would not help because what we're dealing with is an issue that has both tone and color. So frequency separation, what that does is it separates the color from the detail. 
But in this case, we have color and detail on these objects. So this is a retouching trick. In fact, I, you know, why don't I speed things up? Tap, hold the shift key and tap again. Let's just do that on a few of these. It will speed things up a little bit. So sometimes things just take work, guys. And and that's the thing is like, and this, this is what I'm trying to illustrate right now is there's not a secret magic trick for everything. And if people tell you that, they're misleading you. Anyone that's done this in the real world knows that. All right, so let's just speed this up a little bit. I can, I can definitely do this way faster. All right, so while we're doing this, um, there we go. Why don't we play a little game? And the little game is name that keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to start. I'm going to ask you guys a keyboard shortcut. And we're going to see who knows what it does. So I'm going to start with one that I've done a lot here, which is Command, Option, Shift, and E. So let's see who gets that. And then I'm going to ask another one. Let's ask two. So the second one is one I already showed you guys. What is the keyboard shortcut for the fill dialog box? So pop your answers there into the chat. And let's see what we get. See what I'm doing is I'm just removing these one line at a time. All right, let's see how people are going with those keyboard shortcuts. Uh, stamp visible, boom. All right, you guys knew that one. Wow, you guys were right on. You all knew that one. All right, well done. All right, so why don't you try and stump me? So ask me a command and see if I know the keyboard shortcut. I probably don't. Because like anybody, there's certain things I do a lot and other things I don't do so much. And right now, Tony's thinking, man, it would have been easier for me just to have gone here and just taken this fence down. All right, so I'm just kind of, don't worry, I'm not going to do the entire photo, just so you know. I'm just going to do the segment so you guys can see how we fix each segment. So, so you, can, you can rest assured you're safe there. So essentially, see what we're doing here is we're removing these on there. And uh, yeah, we're just going to do a segment. Let me just grab a few of these. Okay, let's see. Keyboard shortcuts. Um, shift. Merge layers together. Control or Command E will merge layers together. All the selected layers. Um, control Command E if there are no merged layers will. Um, hang on, let me see. Yeah, so. Actually, that's it. That will merge layers. Control Command E. Um, and if you don't select any, it will merge down with the layer directly underneath it. Um, just a little patience. That's right. Sometimes you need patience. Shift F5. I used to know that one. Um, was that also Phil? Let's find out. I forget. I forget. Shift F5. I know F5 brings up actions. Why are these not working? Nothing's working on here. Hang on a sec. Let me hit the F key. There we go. Shift F5. Let's see what we get. Is the fill dialog box? Yes, it was. Okay, so it was right there. And then F5 itself brings up the brush panel. All right. Magic trick. Cut hole and fence and put the lens through. That works well, too. All right, so let's see what else. Um, I use Shift F5 all the time, Shift Backspace. All right, okay. So let's go into some of this area here. So if I want to start using things like the patch tool, what I got to do is create a good area first. So this is another trick that I'm going to do. So we see this area of dirt. So I'm just going to go in here and just kind of clean some of this up. Once again, I'm just using this spot healing. Let's go in there quickly. And the shift key does save a lot of time. There's a branch there. Should I keep the branch in or take it out? Let's keep it in. So 
let's just clear up a little bit of space here. I probably would take that branch out actually, to be honest, or is it a water pipe? It's not adding much to the uh, scene. All right, so you can see here, we're starting to clean that up. Now let's go the other way. Boom, boom. So sometimes if we do something like the patch tool, let's grab the patch tool here. Um, remembering where they put that, they moved it. It's under here. So you could go for an area like this and we want to set this as the destination and say, you know what, I want to clean this up. You could go in and then find another area. Why did that not work? Source. So yeah, you could kind of start to do things like that. And see what we're doing is we're slowly starting to clean this up. And if we look at this before and after, see how we're getting there? We're slowly getting there. So essentially, I'm just going to do it for just a little bit more and then we're going to move into something else because I don't want this to get too monotonous. But essentially, this is what we're doing. This brush is probably a little big. You might want to zoom in and make your brush a little bit smaller. And uh, yeah, see what we're doing? And all we're doing is just going in there using that spot healing brush. These spot brushes, by the way, just changed everything. Because back in the day, you know, we used to, have, and by the way, if you do a smaller sections like this, it's going to get a much better result, but it's going to take more time. But look at this. See the result? If I just do it one bit at a time, now it's starting to get a lot better. See that? And then what you can do is you can work in there, you can get a nice area that looks nice and clean, and then you can start duplicating that and using it. This is kind of the same as like if you were retouching a face up close, this is exactly the same thing. You know, I hear a term high-end retouching. I'm not sure what high-end retouching is versus what, what's low-end retouching. I mean, there's retouching. There's good retouching and bad retouching. Is high-end retouching considered good retouching? Or is it more expensive? Or is it a more expensive shoot? So that means you're doing high-end retouching because it was an expensive shoot. Let me know what you guys think in the comments there. Because I hear this term, but really, I know what people are trying to say. Um, you know, does that mean that fashion, because it's always fashion photography, does that mean fashion's more important than landscape? I don't know. Ask Peter Lick when he sold that photo for, what, $3 million, $4 million? Was that less high-end? Or was that considered high-end retouching? Is this high-end retouching? Let's see what you guys got to say about that. Um, I would just clean the main subject, say just the car is in a speedway shot. More expensive when I do it? Okay. So high-end is that when you just go in and you just do something rough and ready versus going into a minuscule? Maybe it would be when you go into the pixel level like this and you really get in here. So, you know, and you get in at this level. Is this now considered high-end retouching? When we do it like that? And so you can look at it nice and big. Love to hear what you guys say. Okay, so if I go in here, we're obviously going to get a better result, right? It's going to take way longer. So is that considered high-end retouching? And then I go back here and I do like just the tricks. You know, when I grab it, hold the shift key, boom, like that. So does that mean, you know, this is now low-end retouching? So that means that when someone does a tutorial and they call it the super quick instant tip for instant high-end retouching, it's done quickly, so it can't be high-end retouching, right? Let's see what you guys say in the chat. Um, a rough and ready job is not at all high end. I would be, <laughs> I would be if I was doing it. Okay, there we go. All right. I think high end is when you handle little details. I like that, Mary. I think Mary's got a great um, definition right there. So when you handle the little details, it's high end. Okay, I'll I'll buy that. And by the way, see how I was getting that way and it wasn't working, and you go the other way. It samples. 
from a different region. So if you go down, see I go down here versus going up, you'll get a different sample. Actually, going up seems to work better on these. Oh, let, why, why am I I'm always defaulting back to doing those one at a time when I could just click here and I could tap on those. And see how I'm just going in here, just doing them. And in a second, we'll zoom out and then we'll move on to something else. So you can see where we're starting to get there. And we're slowly starting to chip away at all of this stuff. And, uh, you know, before, after. Yeah, see, we're getting there. And then all you want to do is just keep going, guys. You just keep doing the same thing. And if you have an area that is clear, that doesn't have the fence in there, you know, that would be much easier to just kind of pick that up and then just clone it in. Now, another way to cheat would be just literally take another photograph from another area. This is what I would do is I would take a photo next to this with a similar kind of a ground that doesn't have the fence in there or put the camera over the fence or through the fence and get a section from there. And then you could actually just start to um, transplant. So you could Frankenstein it. So you could grab those areas out of the other photos and start to just kind of Frankenstein them in there. So it's not going to be that hard to clean up that background. It's just a lot of the same meticulous work. And I just go in here and I'm just using this same thing with the tree. Eventually you'll get it. You know, just holding the shift key. See what I'm doing? Click, shift, click, sh click, shift, click. Just a little bit there. Go up. And that's it, guys. That is how to fix something like this tree or this whole area. You know, you just rinse and repeat. All right. So enough of that. Whew. All right. So you can see before and after. So hopefully that was interesting for you guys um we just wanted to see how we would approach it so the first one we did was this one which was nice and easy we were able to do that for gradient we were able to cheat then there was one of these where it actually took a little bit more hard work and in a situation like this oh let me just open this one just to show you something quickly how you could kind of cheat on some of this so here's another little trick that i do sometimes when i'm doing something that i know is going to require a lot of work what i'll do is i'll make a selection around an area like this and then i'll hit you know better selection than that there we go and i'll just hit Control j and i'll copy this so here's here's another thing that usually i'll start with this and then if I've got stuff like I know I need to do a lot, I'm just going to patch it. So I'm going to hit the Alt or Option key and start to grab some patches in here. Then what you can do when you start patching it is select those layers, hit Control E that will merge those together. And then maybe even hide the background. Zoom in. Here's, here's how you're going to save a little bit of time. Now, what you got to do is just clean up the areas that look like repetition, repetition, reputation. Um, so, you know, I can see there's a few of those, so we'll get rid of one of them. What looks like it's repeating, maybe that. That stick there is repeating, so let's get rid of the stick over here. Let's get rid of it there. So all I'm doing now is just looking. Um, so essentially what we're doing is we're creating a patch here that's not going to look too repetitive. And you could even jump in and grab the clone stamp tool here if you wanted. You know, and just do different things. So essentially what you're doing now is you're just creating something here. So you're creating a new area. Then this is something that's just saved me a lot of time. So here's, here, this is a time-saving trick. So essentially you're creating a new patch. All right, that's cool. So now it doesn't look so repetitive. And then all you got to do is grab that, hit the V key, that's the move tool. And you just kind of dra drop it in here, hit the Alt or the Option key. And then what I would do is I would just go in and I would just dump a few of these in here. Maybe start to make them a little bit smaller. Control Command T as we're going in this area. Start to make them a little smaller so it goes into the, starts to fit the perspective. You know, now we can see that stump there is obviously 
repetitive. So that's something you might reduce, get rid of that stump as well. But see what we're doing here is this is a quick way to do this kind of work. And it will work because we've got a good area. And see, we're already just kind of covering some of this. And then at the top here, you could just create a new layer on top. And we're going to grab our clone stamp tool. And I want to set this sample to all layers. Otherwise, nothing is going to happen. And then you hold the Alt or the Option key, sample something from here, and get rid of the stuff that's repetitive. So now you don't have to get rid of everything. All you need to do is get rid of stuff that's obviously repetition. Start to do that. And as you can see, now we start to create something that is going to get rid of that texture just by covering it with something. So the way to retouch is either one, remove it, Number two, cover it, or in the worst case, number three, replace it. So what we're simply doing is we're doing number two and number three here at the same time. And now once you get to this point, what you could do is you could go into your clone store source, choose window, and then use the clone source. And we're able to do this because we had a clean area to work with. That was a problem with the previous photo. We didn't have that clean area to work with. So when you're photographing and you know you're going to retouch it, make sure you photograph. Try to get that clean area in here. And then, so what we're doing here is I'm going to set this to offset. Let's change the uh, width and height. Mm. Let's go down to, I don't know, 50%. Let's type that in here. And now as I paint, this is going to make it smaller. See that? So I can start here. Let me just do really big so you guys can see what's going on. So if I click here and then go here, as I go there, now it's going to get 50% smaller. See that? Finer detail. Grab it here. So you want the detail over there. Then that's going to do it as it gets smaller. See that? Looks like Andrew there is uploading some photos to fix my photos. So yeah, so that's how you can go in and put fine detail in the distance just by doing it that way using that clone source. And as you can see there, that's going to start to work really nicely. Let me select all of these, put them in a group. Before, after, we're able to start to fix that. So what I would do is take this technique, clean up the big stuff, and then the little stuff, just go back in and just do exactly what we did before with the content aware and all that kind of stuff. And you know what? And you'll get through this photo in no time at all. Now, here's a tip. Listen to some good music when you're playing. So um, good music is definitely going to help. Okay, we got some underwater photos here. Hmm. Let's have a look and see what we can do. This just uploaded right now by Al, I believe. Al is in the house because he just uploaded this. All right, so we got some underwater stuff. I like that. Now, one of the challenges, of course, that's going to happen with this is when you're underwater, you're going to get this blue tone through everything. And you're not going to be able to get all the proper colors back. Um, so let's see what we can do. I can change the main color temperature, see what we're going to do. We're just going to go in there and the blue and the reason for that is if you look at the colors of the rainbow red and there's actually some filters by the way that you can use shooting underwater but if you look at the colors of the rainbow right red orange yellow green blue violet so as you go from the surface of the water you see the full color as you start to go down the reds disappear then the yellows disappear then the greens that's why it starts to look blue and then you go down really far. It's violet because of the wavelength. They're not, uh, they can't penetrate as far because the shorter wavelengths uh, can't penetrate as far as those longer wavelengths. So that's why the color tends to appear that color. Plus you get the pollution in the air also starts to filter that out. So it filters out some of the other colors. 
So when you are diving, one of the things you want to do is carry a light. So you see um, a lot of these uh, documentaries and stuff, or you know when you see the divers on underwater photography, they have these big lights. Now the big lights allow you to see because obviously it gets darker. But the other thing that those big lights do is that they will um, illuminate those areas and allow you to see those colors again. So it'll bring the colors back. Now these colors are not miraculously going to be hidden here in the water. Um, these colors are still going to be gone because they're, they're just not there. So let's just uh, edit this. I'm going to right click and open as a smart object in Photoshop. So let's choose um, edit in, open as a smart object in Photoshop. All right, so how's that like button going, guys? Um, oh, it looks like we've got some, some good amount of likes. So do me a favor, smash that like button. All right, so what can we do here? Let's go into Camera Raw. Let's choose Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And we definitely want the blue. You know, the blue is going to be important. And, uh, you know, if I choose a white balance here, this will white balance everything. So that's essentially, you know, what we have in the other colors. So it's not a ton. Let me just do something here. I'm going to hit Control J. I'm going to right click and I'm going to rasterize the background layer. Now, the reason I'm rasterizing that background is because when I go into camera raw, I only want to affect that one layer because I want to do something different with both layers. If I go into camera raw, I duplicate it. It's going to change both of them, just so you know. So when you change one with a smart object, it's going to change all of them. OK, so let's go into camera raw filter. Um, all right, so let us go in here. We're going to just tap here to remove our white balance, set it to neutral, click OK. So we've got that on top. All right, I'm just going to right click and I'm going to rasterize. I'm going to try something. I don't even know if this is going to work, but let's have a look. We're going to go under the filters. And if you guys are aware, we have neural filters. And one of the neural filters we have is colorize, hopefully. There it is, colorize. If you see it there and it looks like this, click the little button, it will download it. So right now it's downloading it. So you guys have that. So these are the beta ones. So we're downloading these. I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but let's see where we are now for likes, 115. Come on guys, we can get to 200. Look at that, okay. So the colorize is, is not bad. It's not bad. It's not perfect, but you know, hey, it's getting a little bit of color in here. At least it knows that the stars and stripes are supposed to be red, white, and blue. How does it know that? Magic. I should just use this AI. All right, so it's going in here. I know the uh, POW missing in action flags are black and white, so we don't have to worry about color there. So click OK. Um, all right, so we're, we're getting there. All right, so what I want to do now is I'm going to create another layer on top, and I'm going to change the blend mode of this to color. So this means if I grab my brush and I grab the B key for brush, let's make sure we have a nice soft edge. And uh, let's take our flow and opacity all the way up. And then I option click here on the red. I can paint with red because we are in color blend mode. So just go in there and in, whoops. So what you're probably going to do is if you're smart, you're going to go in and use the selection tools. So let's try the object selection tool and see how this works. You know what? I need to be on the right layer. Let's try that again. There we go. So the object selection is going to kind of select it and help me. So let's go back here, grab, grab the brush and we can paint in there. See that it's going to hold it. Okay. So let's just, do a little bit more. So click, hold the shift key, click. We get that nice edge there. That'll create a straight line. So what I should be doing is using a hard edge brush. Right now I'm just too lazy to change it. And essentially we could do that. Now we could use different selection tools here. If we wanted to select this to speed up this process, let's just go into here and we're gonna choose select. Let's try the color range. Let's change that to image. 
Oh, actually, let's do the image on the front. All right, so let's select that. Let's grab the little plus tool. Let's select around there, select around there, select around there. Let's get some of these stripes. All right, there we go. There we go, much better. All right, so we're getting these stars and stripes and now being selected. Look at that. Boom, boom, boom. Great. Let's hit the Q for quick mask. And now with the brush, I'm going to set this to a hard edge brush now just to speed things up. What I want to do is I'm just going to paint these in. Make sure you turn pen pressure off. So that'll just make things go a little faster. And now you're just going to fix these stripes in here. Look at this. Just fix the little dots in there. So this way we can just get the whole selection. Let me show you a quick way to clean up the selection. So we're going to go under the channels. Let's grab a channel out here and click on the eye and this will hide everything. All right, there we go. Black and white. I want to darken those blacks. I want to get rid of the spots in the white. Control L for levels. So we go here. Notice we can close in those blacks. We can clean those up a little bit. Gets rid of a lot of little gaps in here. Fill in little gaps in there. I'm not worried about the stars and stripes at the moment. I'm, of the stars, I'm just looking at the stripes right now. And just grab those areas that look like they need a little help. So what we're doing is just creating a mask for this at the moment. So I don't have to select everything individually. But by the way, you can retouch anything even if it comes down at literally just having to paint. And I've done that before. And in fact, I used to do a, a lot of photorealistic illustration. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. But how I started doing that was from retouching. I literally used to have to retouch stuff that was so bad that I had to replace it. And I'm sure a lot of you guys do. You're literally painting new things in. And I decided, well, what if I just start without a, you know, without a photo? And that's literally how I started doing the photorealistic illustration. So now I can just quickly paint in here because I've got this nice selection. And I can get my reds in there. Look at that. Nice. Nice and quick. Boom. I can go in there, grab those. And let me just hit Control H for a second. I just want to hide these and see what we're working with. All right, that's, that's good. Um, you might save that selection. I'm not going to bother. And now you want to grab the in here. Now, if I do color, I have an idea. I'm just going to see if something's going to work. Let me create a new layer. I'm just going to try something. I don't know if this will work or not, but let's see how we go. Is if I grab this layer here and I go back into the color blend mode. I'm thinking luminosity. No, hue. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm just thinking here. But if I can paint, maybe I don't have to mask out those. If I grab some blue, maybe I don't have to mask. Yep. I don't have to mask the stars because I am using hue and there's no hue in the white. Okay. So that can save you a little time there when it comes to painting those. All right, so now we start to put some color in there. I don't even know if we need that black and white one. That's obviously too much color there. So what if we mix these? Let's take this one, bring the opacity down a little bit, and we're just going to kind of blend these so we can start to get a little bit more color. That's a little too much. Let's take it down. And just bring in a little bit of color. Go here. Take that down and just bring in a little bit of color. And, you know, and that's essentially because I still want it to look like we're underwater. We're just putting back some color. And if it's too much, you can hit Control U. We'll bring up hue saturation. And if you're like, you know what, I want to lighten that color a little bit. See how you can change the lightness or darkness of this and start to get it more how you want it. And see what we're doing here. We're just tweaking that until we get those colors the way we want it. Can we try dehaze feature in Camera Raw? Um, 
Yeah, you could apply dehaze. It's not going to bring back that color, but it definitely will bring you more of the contrast. And in fact, why don't we do that now? We'll grab all these layers and I'm going to right click convert to smart object. And we could go in and we could do that. And let's see what happens if we try some dehaze now. Let's choose filter camera raw. Let's go under the, yep. It's going to help us a little bit. Notice the contrast there. So we could take the blacks. We could push the blacks up. We could push our whites up. Play around a little bit for exposure contrast. Let's not keep it too contrasty. Let's grab those highlights of those areas. You want to bring out those tones. Let's do that. Shadows. And uh, there we go. Click OK. All right. Feeling better today. Oh, well, good. I'm glad you're feeling better. All right. So anyway, so that's where we're kind of going with that. Now, if we jumped into here, actually, let's double click again. That will take us into all the individual layers. Now, if you wanted to show more of that color through there, maybe you do. Let's go in there and we're going to apply the layer mask. I think I do. I want to show some of that blue. So let's just paint with that mask. I want a soft edge mask. Let's grab that hardness and I'm going here. I want to change the opacity here. Transfer, set that to pen pressure so I can blend that. And I'm just going to undo that stroke and now I can paint this. Start to blend this in a little bit. So I can go harder if I want more of that blue. Let's put a little bit of that blue back in there because underwater is not going to be white water. There we go. So we're going in there. We're starting to see, you know, a little bit. Maybe I'll keep that. Ah, no, let's not do that. Let's go back. And so if you have an area like that and you, of course, the mask just hit the X key and we can paint that out on the mask if you don't want to apply the blue to that area Hit the X key goes back to the blue and now we're starting to put a little bit of this color back in and same with the diver if you wanted some skin tone best way to grab some skin tone would actually be to just grab it from another photo. Let's go in to see what you guys have submitted. And uh, what do we got here? Where is someone with some skin tones? Here we go. Let's open this. And I'm going to grab this one too. I'm going to grab one of these and I'm going to grab this one. All right, so what have we got here? So there's our original. There's our other one we work on. I'm just going to put these together so you guys can see when we go through and do a before and after with the whole thing. Oh. All right, I'm going to grab the sample tool. Let's set it to about a five by five average and we're going to grab some skin tones. So initially this is going to look really bad, just so you know. And let me save these. Control S will save that. And that will update back into the smart object. Still saving. There we go. Updates back into the smart object. There's a camera raw adjustment, which might be a little much now. Create a new layer. Let's choose color on top. Let's zoom in. Now this is going to be too much, I'm sure at first. And we can start to put some of these skin tones in here. And so what we're literally doing now is we're just colorizing manually. Now this is going to be too much, but that's okay. So I'm going to go in and make sure we do too much. And in that way I can do a little less in the goggles. 
And then if we zoom out, all we need to do is take the opacity down. Dial in a little bit more. There we go. Until it starts to look right. And now we're starting to colorize the photograph. Now I'm not colorizing this to the point where these colors are just super saturated because that's just going to look fake because we're still underwater. And I feel like they still are a little bit much on that camera raw. Let's go to this camera raw adjustment. Yeah, I see that's too much. So let's go back into camera raw now. And I'm going to take it down. It's too much. Let's pull back on those blacks a little bit. The dehaze looks good, but let's give it a touch of exposure to make up for it. And let's pull that vibrance down. Click OK. All right. So, you know, clearly that's way too much now. See how that face, now our eyes have calibrated to that and it just looks too much. So let's reduce it. Yeah. And if you feel like the whole camera raw thing is too much, double click on there and this will bring up our blending options and we can reduce the opacity on that. So let's take it all the way down. So there's no adjustments and then slowly just bring in. So this is that clarity that we did. I think about 40% is going to work. And uh, so we're looking at, what is that before? There we go. So there's our before and there's our after. So yeah, we got some color back in there. Um, so anyway, that was, as you know, completely unrehearsed. <laughs> so oh, how are you guys doing there? I learned a lot of Photoshop, thank you. All right, guys. So anyway, so we just kind of went into some much more difficult images. Usually, you know, I do more kind of enhancement and things like that. But today we just went in and we picked, you know, some very difficult images that I knew we weren't just going to be able to do a one-click trick to fix it so we could kind of dig in. And, uh, and kind of it's a good way to experiment and see how some of the different tools work together. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close it out now and then we're going to just kind of hang out for a little bit. So thanks for watching. If you guys haven't yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button and you won't miss any videos from me. If you like this, smash the like button into dust and uh, don't forget to join us back here every week at 1 p.m. Pacific time at Live from Lockdown. Alright guys, and here we are, we're just kind of back now, and it's just me here with the chat, and let's see what we've got there with that chat. Thanks guys for uh, coming, and good to see lots of regulars there, Alan, good to see you, Tracy, Daniela, Russ, Simon, Susan, Orcapes, Russ Jones, two Russes now. How are you guys quoting someone like the at sign, do I have to type in the person's name, I guess someone... Got that. Yep. Uh, good to see you, Klaus. Thanks. See you guys next week. Um, I'm glad Tracy's enjoying it. Chris liked it. Learning a lot. Glad, Russ. Um, you're welcome, Mary. Jojo. Diana Stewart. Good to see you. Kiora from New Zealand. Uh, Ken Strick Strickrad. Good to see you. See you all next week. Janice. Good to see you. Ralph Nelson. Good to see you. Um, once again, many thanks. Stay safe. Mask, vaccinate, live. Yes, two weeks since my last vaccination, so it's good. Thanks, Rolf. Joey, thank you. Um, glad you liked it, Ronald. Thank you, John. Uh, Daniela, Donald Haynes, good to see you. Tony Mule, thank you for submitting your photos. Discover the oil paint filter this week. Ah, yay. All right, Hannah, good to see you. You're welcome. Niccolo, Jan, Rayal. Ray L. Love the differ field advice. Okay, you got it. Uh, Thomas, thank you. Good to see you. Susan, good to see you. Jim, Daniel, Sherry, Joe, Alan. All right. All right, guys, if you've got any questions, don't forget to um, drop a question into the um, chat pod here. No, I have not sprouted a third eye yet, Tracy, so, so we're good. Two weeks into it. And just the regular ones right now. Um, thank you for not just sticking with Lightroom. I know, David, you hate Lightroom. 
Oh, uh, hey, Rainy, good to see you. Good to see you, PL Photo. You're, you're welcome. Thanks from Scotland, Colin Little, Bunny Scotland. What part of Scotland are you from, Colin? Uh, a lot new this evening. See you next week. You've got it, Chris Bacon. So, um, lockdown mode, so the class is amazing. I'm following you since a long time. Hugs. Thank you, Dan Daniela. Thank you for joining us. As an underwater photographer, that was helpful. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad it helped you, uh, Jeffrey. And um, and I'll be honest with you. I haven't done a lot of underwater photography, nor researched much about how to retouch them. So that was just kind of what came to mind for me. So maybe I'll, I'll do some research and maybe come back with some um, better techniques in the future um, or if we deal with those again. Any special ideas of low light having to boost ISO? Um, yeah. So um, I, I guess you're talking about in camera, Donald. Okay, so if you're shooting in low light, what you want to do, or at least what I what I like to do, is first of all discover what the threshold is in your camera before you start getting noise. So go into low light situations and just try just incrementing your ISO. Take the same shot, um, incrementing it by you know a hundred or or so each time, or doubling it each time. And then just kind of look at where it breaks down so you can find out, you know, and do this in a couple of situations, indoors, outdoors, sunset. Find your threshold point on your camera where you know it's going to be acceptable or not acceptable. So, so you find out, you know, hey, it looks good at, you know, ISO 20,000, but it doesn't look good at ISO 10,000. So where in the middle is it breaking down? Find that breakdown point. Um, and then that that's really important and then you know if it's more than that you're not going to be able to do it now of course if you use a lens with a shallower um you know bigger aperture you can shoot at a higher um you know your f-stop so open up that aperture as wide as you can if you've got a tripod you can use a slower shutter speed unless of course you have movement so if you have landscape you never have to shoot a super high iso um, because you can open up that aperture do a, a, a longer shutter speed if you're handheld so then you just want to kind of uh, play around with that until you know that iso so if you're below that iso threshold you're you're okay you don't really have to worry about much if you go above it now you've either got to hold the camera more steady use a longer shutter speed or get more light into the camera the way to get more light in is open up that aperture um if you don't have a lens that you know if you're only shooting with an f4 and you need something with a, a bigger f-stop then you're gonna have to invest another in lens if you don't have a lot of money to spend on that lens then of course you can use a prime lens which is going to be less expensive to get something like a 1.8 or a 1.2 and that'll get more light in there so if you've expanded your camera you've got the camera open as much as you possibly can you've got it as stable as you can and you're still passing that iso threshold now you're at a point when you need to introduce lighting so either you're going to be you know putting a flash on there or you're going to be using other light sources um and that's that's basically you know what you're dealing with at that point if you can't get any of those then you're pushing it into a higher iso and the only way you're going to do it is to use noise reduction but noise reduction should not be the first thing you go for it should be kind of a last resort all right long-winded answer to, to a quick question there uh see you later tracy good to uh see you um all right who else we got here bye bye all see you all right guys so thanks for joining us i'll see you next week um see you guys <laughs>